place we belong. We don't even belong in the position of the disciples. The only place we belong on this side of the cross is in the place of Christ. Amen. He is our original standard. And so he tells us right here that the works that he did, we can do also. And greater works than these, we can do. Now, a few points that we need to notice. First of all, there's no mention of gifting here. And I'll talk about this a little bit later. But Jesus never said that we would do the works that he did in greater works because we had a special gift. He never mentioned. What he did is he demonstrated how the Son of God and a Son of God should walk and live this earth as a Son of God. Amen? As a man anointed of the Holy Ghost. So he never mentioned gifting. But Jesus said we would do those works and greater works would be accomplished today. Why? Number one, not because we try hard, not because we pray and fast for long periods of time. The reason that we would do the works of Jesus and greater is because he's gone to the Father. Amen. 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 And because of the authority in the name of Jesus. Jesus told us in John chapter 16, verse 23 and 24, he said, in that day, in what day? In the day that I leave. In the day that I ascend into heaven, he said, you shall ask me nothing. Now, up to that time, whenever the disciples needed anything, whenever anybody needed anything, they could run to Jesus, they could go to him, and the master could grant them uh, whatever request that it is that they need. But he said, in that day, in the day that I ascend into heaven, you shall ask me nothing. But he said, you shall ask the Father in my name. He said, and the Father will give to you whatever it is that you need. Asking you shall receive that your joy may be full. You know, it's amazing to me. God wants Christians to be joyful. I, I, I don't think, and this is not a, you know, a, a derogatory comment against anybody, but you know, I see more Christians that look like they've been baptized in pickle juice. <laughs> and it's like, well, come and be like me. You know, come and serve the God I want to serve. It's like, give me a break. You know, there are sinners that are more joyful and happier, you know, than what they're doing. I mean, we should be the most joyful. Yeah. Why? Because now joy is, you know, joy is not based on experiences. Joy is, joy is something inherent, which is part of my born-again spirit. Yeah. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy. Yeah. Amen. Peace, long suffering, jealous, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. So all of those things are part of my being now. And so we should be the most joyful people on the face of this earth. Well, brother, you can say that, but you don't know what I'm going through. Well, wait a second. Jesus said that I can come to him and I can get whatever it is I need. I can go to the Father in his name and get whatever I need. That's right. Because I'm coming in his stead. I'm coming in the name of Jesus. Amen. I can do the works of Christ, you can do the works of Christ, and greater works than these. Why? Because Jesus has gone to the Father, and because of the authority in the name of Jesus. You remember in Luke chapter 10 and verse 17, where Jesus sent the disciples out, and they came back to 70, and they came back and they said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us in your name. It is amazing to me, Jesus has not even died yet. He hasn't even gone into heaven. He hasn't even taken his blood and put it on the heavenly holy of holies. And God's accepting it and saying this. His name was powerful. Even before the cross, they went out and they cast out devils and healed the sick in his name before the cross. Amen. Now on this side of the cross, he says, go ye, Mark chapter 16. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And these signs will follow them that believe in my name. Now. We, we covered this last week and we said this, that in the New Testament Greek, there's no noun for a believer. It's a participle of a verb, and it is one who is believing. See, the second we are born again, we are inheritors, we are partakers of him and all that him entails. But Christians can live as orphans if they do not actively participate or act on the Word of God. Amen? Uh, do we have the power of God? Do we have the life of God? Do we have all things that pertain to life and godliness? Do we have that? Yes. But they are partaken of through the true and precious promises when we agree with and act on the Word of God. Now, that would be a hard thing, and we covered this last week, and so I'll just put this out there again. Okay, how do I get the power of God working in and through my life? 
How do I get the grace, God's strength, power, might, and ability working in and through my life? Listen, I go to the Word. I find out what the Word of God says. Listen, I make a conscience, willful decision that this is so, and I'm going to do it. When I make that conscious, willful decision, the Holy Spirit, His grace, His power, might, and ability empower, empowers me to follow through and do what I set, what I set out to do. When I do that, God the Holy Spirit unites with the Word of God and He causes to come to pass what that Word says that I acted on. Right. Amen? So the only thing I have to do is make a conscious, willful decision that I'm going to do the Word. When I do that, the Holy Spirit empowers me to do it. When I do it, He causes it to come to pass. See, see, see Christians make it, not a few people, but Christians make things difficult, and it's not difficult. Why? Because Jesus went to heaven and because he's given us the authority in his name. So Peter and John go up at the gate beautiful, and there's a man there who's been lame from birth 40 years. And they're going up to the hour of prayer, and, and, he, and Peter says, look on us. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee, listen, in the name, say in the name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And so he takes this man by the hand and he rises up and walks. Later on, the magistrate says, how did you do that? By what authority and what power did you do that? Now, this is a point you got to get. And I, and I think this was covered last night or yesterday sometime. See, Peter said, look on us. So he knew what he had. We take responsibility for everything. We take credit for nothing. See, Peter knew what he had. And so he said, look on us. But when they said, how did you do this? He said, why are you looking at me? He said, it's the name of Jesus and faith in that name. So again, we take responsibility for everything. I take credit for nothing. Amen. If, if, if that word does not come to pass in a person's life, it, it, it's, it's not God's fault. And if I'm involved, and I don't even like to use the word fault because it puts guilt and condemnation on people. So I, I, take, I, take, I use the word responsibility. Now, just, just a, a little side note for you to help you. Responsibility is not a hard word. It's my response to his ability. Amen. And when you think of it that way, now all of a sudden all the pressure is off me. All I have to do is act on the word like it's so. That would be a hard thing, except it already is so. Amen? Amen. And so responsibility is my response to his ability. So Peter takes the responsibility to do, and he understands who he is, what he has, and what he can do. And he says, but the key in this point is, in the name of Jesus, when he says that, what is that? It's the power of attorney to contract business on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. You get that? See, it's not some magic word. It's not in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. E.F. Hutton, when he speaks, everybody listens. You saw the commercial, right? When you say in the name of Jesus, heaven hears and endorses, hell stops and obeys, all of creation, you know, not just the animal kingdom, not just the, the spiritual kingdom, plants, animals, rocks, everything stops at the name of Jesus. It heeds the words of the Son of God that's speaking the word of God. The name of Jesus is the power of attorney to contract business on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't understand what I'm saying, it's just like Jesus is right there doing the works himself. Now, here's a revelation for you. He is right there doing the works because he's one with you. Amen? Now, go over to John chapter 5. So, again, we're, we're, we're going to start a series this week, Doing the Works of Christ. And that doing, again, is habitually practicing as a lifestyle, living and walking this earth just like Jesus. That is God's plan. That is his intent for your life. Amen? Amen. And see, it would be a hard thing if it's something that we got to accomplish, but it's not. Jesus already accomplished it. He won the victory, and he freely gave it to me. He defeated the devil. I don't have to defeat the devil. The devil's already defeated. For this purpose, 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy, render helpless, or paralyze the works of